two videos in a week. Don't get used to it. There is a big misunderstanding about my channel because it's not that I don't want to use plugins at all. I do use plugins. I just try to avoid them whenever I can for some reasons. But that's another story I want to elaborate in a separate video. It's the Saber plugin from Video Copilot I'm gonna use in this video. Although I already recreated it with native effects as an homage to the original plugin. And it's a bit of paying tribute to Andrew Kramer, who surprisingly re emerged recently. Thank you. Say hi to German Bavarian cows. Hi. For this After Effects tutorial, I felt the challenge to find a way to make Saber work for a 3D wireframe that you can also interactively manipulate in After Effects 3D space. To create the TIE Fighter, I applied my 3D shape layer technique that some of you might already know. But here, I'm just showing you the relevant steps in a quick way because I rather want to focus on how to get Saber into 3D. What? On how to get 3D into Saber. But if you want to get deeper into it, I recommend to watch my 3D shape layer tutorial. Of course, you can skip that 3D modeling part and download my After Effects project file of the 3D TIE Fighter for free. Let's jump right into After Effects. It's gonna be really fast paced now to show you the process of creating the TIE Fighter. I'm gonna leave out some repetitive steps to get faster to the point, showing you just the most important steps. But as I said, you can watch my mentioned step-by-step -step tutorial if you want to know why I'm doing what I'm going to do next. Before I created the TIE Fighter, I got inspired by simplified illustrations that I thought would be suitable for the 3D shape layer technique. Then I selected the star tool, double-clicked on it to insert a default star shape into the composition and deleted the fill operator. Next, I changed the type to polygon, set the points value to 6 to get a hexagon, and rotated it by 30 degrees. I converted the shape to a Bezier path and selected the path attribute. In the window menu, I opened up the Create Nulls from Paths panel and clicked on the Paths Follow Nulls button. This created 6 null objects that I turned into 3D layers. I created an additional 3D null layer to be my transform controller and parented the other null layers to it. I changed the perspective to get a better view, duplicated the whole setup and updated the point connections to the new null layers. Then I scaled down the new hexagon. With the same technique, I created new lines to connect the small hexagon to the bigger one that completed the wing of the TIE Fighter. Because of so many shape layers, I've been giving the layers different label colors to be able to distinguish them from each other. Then I created another null controller for the whole wing rig and parented the subcontrollers to it. To avoid confusion, I labeled the main controller and checked the shy checkboxes of the connecting null layers to hide them when necessary. Next, I duplicated the rig of the big hexagon and with the wing hidden, I rotated it by 90 degrees and scaled it down. I right-clicked on the path to convert it into a Rotobezier path, which transformed the hexagon to a circle. I duplicated the circle setup, moved it forward and scaled it down. This time I duplicated the small circle setup and moved it backwards to complete the TIE Fighter cockpit. Then I unhided the wing, moved it to the left, duplicated it and moved it to the right. You get the point why I wanted a simplified TIE Fighter. Because there is no backface culling like in a real 3D app, meaning that you always see through the wires, it can cause visual chaos the more lines you have. And that's why I connected the cockpit to the wings with just simple lines. And after some minor corrections, I completed the minimalistic TIE Fighter that you can transform in the After Effects 3D space. By the way, for those who are not familiar with it, it's from Star Wars. It's a spaceship for the bad guys. To animate the TIE Fighter, I duplicated one of the null controllers to be my master controller, parented the subcontrollers to it and animated the rotation. To fast for you? No problem. When you want to start the tutorial from here, you can now download the free After Effects project file of the TIE Fighter and continue with the actual tip I made this tutorial for. Everything before was just the foreplay anyway. Okay, we have our 3D wireframe completed, and now we want to feed it into the Saber plugin. 
There are two scenarios. The first one is, you are happy with the animation and we want to get rid of all the null layers and have just the shape layers left. It's even possible to comprise all of it into one single shape layer, which saves us from a lot of expressions computing and layer chaos. The other scenario is, okay, I want to have it in the Saber plugin, but still want the option to change the animation and the 3D model when necessary. In this case, we have to keep all the layers. Let's start with scenario number one first. Select all the shape layers and double press the E key. This reveals the path attributes containing expressions created by the create nulls from path script. You can bake the path animation driven by the expressions by selecting all path attributes, going to animation, keyframe assistant and selecting convert expressions to keyframes, which means that the paths now got their own keyframes, totally independent from the expressions that controlled the animation before. You can go to animation, remove expression, and the animation is still there. For the further steps, we could colorize the parts differently, just to keep a clear overview. You can also lower the stroke width if you feel that everything is overwhelming. To reduce the number of layers, open the group of a shape layer and copy-paste the paths from the other shape layers labeled with the same color into the group. And once we've done this with all the paths, you can delete the shape layers that we don't need anymore. Repeat this procedure to the other shape layers. Copy-paste the paths with the same label color into one shape layer and delete the rest. And luckily, the shape layers are clearly assigned to a color label corresponding to the TIE Fighter parts, so we don't lose track of the sheer amount of layers. Eventually, you should have four layers, two for the wings and one each for the connection lines and the cockpit. Of course, you could group them into just one single shape layer, but I personally find it handier to have them as separated shape layers. If we wanted, we could stop the tutorial here and be satisfied with the possibilities the shape layers have. But we demand the Saber Glow for the TIE Fighter. To achieve this, create a new solid and give it an empty mask. Well, it's not really empty. By default, it's a rectangle with the composition's measurements. Let's say this solid is for the connecting lines which consists of two paths. So duplicate the mask to get the equivalent number. From here, it's a no-brainer. Because we only need to copy the shape layer's path keyframes into the mask path attributes. Create a new solid for each TIE Fighter part and repeat the procedure of transferring the shape layer's path keyframes into the mask paths. And now comes the fun part. Let's add the Saber plugin to the solids and set core type to layer masks. The good thing about having multiple solids is that you can now adjust the parts individually. That was scenario number one. For the next scenario, keeping the 3D object and the animation editable, we're gonna jump back to the initial state, but keep the solids with the default masks. And the only thing we have to do is connect the mask path attributes to the shape path attributes with the help of the expression pick whip. Now connect all mask paths to the according shape paths. I know, this can be really fiddly with thousands of layers. To not get confused, switch the layer into shy mode when the connection is accomplished. And now you can toggle off all the shape layers. Please do not turn off the null layers, like in this case, because the expressions wouldn't work then. Everything would be 2D, like here. So switch everything on and turn off just the shape layers. And when you toggle on the Saber layers, you can see that the mask paths don't only adopt the animation, you can also adjust it, change the camera perspective, or even tweak the 3D model, while Saber is active. And now, have fun with Saber in 3D. Okay, I'll promise the next tutorial will be step-by-step -step again. See you next time.